Welcome to the Headless Professor video series on logic. Today we're going to talk about a different kind of diagram to look at deductive reasoning. We're going to look at the 2 by 2 contingency table. Now this is something that's generally used in inductive reasoning, but I'm going to try a little innovation here. I'm going to show how these 2 by 2 contingency tables can be used for deductive reasoning as well. Now, I'm a professional scientist and only an amateur philosopher, so I think in terms of inductive reasoning and of using 2 by 2 contingency tables for cross tabulations. But they're also going to be useful in looking at the kinds of categorical reasoning that we have with deductive reasoning. So let's start out with our old familiar major premise, all men are mortal. What we're going to do is we're going to draw our 2 by 2 contingency table so that we have our subject defining our rows here. We're going to have one row for men and one row for non-men. We're going to let our predicate being mortal define our columns. So we're going to have two columns, one for things that are mortal and one for things that are not mortal. So every subject that we investigate, every person, every case, will be classified as man or not man, mortal or not mortal. Now this is going to give us four different cells to classify any subject in. Men who are mortal, men who are not mortal, non-men who are mortal, and non-men who are not mortal. Now if we go back to the major premise, all men are mortal, that tells us that one of these four cells is going to be empty. So we're going to put a big X because there are no men who are not mortal. Now let's look at a minor premise that will give us a valid conclusion. Socrates is a man. Well, once I know that Socrates is a man, I know that he's in this row of men. He has to be in one of the two columns but he can't be in this column because there are no men who are not mortal. So Socrates must be in this column, the mortal common. Therefore our conclusion is Socrates is mortal. Now let's try another minor premise that will yield a valid conclusion. Zeus is not mortal. With that we know that Zeus is going to be in the not mortal column. He can't be in this cell because there are no men who are not mortal. Therefore, Zeus must be in this row. He must be in the non-men row of the not mortal column. Zeus is in this cell right here. Okay, let's try some minor premises that will not yield valid conclusions. Rover is mortal. Okay, we know that Rover is in the mortal column, but we really don't have enough information to know where to put Rover. Is Rover another name for a man? Is he Socrates' friend? Or is Rover a non-man, a dog? Both men and dogs are mortal. We don't know how to classify Rover from the information given. Here's another minor premise that will not give us a valid conclusion. Tabby is not a man. Okay, we know that Tabby has to be in the non-men row, but we don't know whether to put Tabby in the mortal column or maybe in the non-mortal column. If Tabby is a cat, that's another mortal being, but if Tabby is another Greek deity along with Zeus, 
tabby would be in the uh, not mortal column. The 2x2 two two contingency table can also be used with no statements, such as no cats have wings. Here, our 2x2 two two contingency table will look like this. One row for cats, row for not cats. Column for the predicate of wings, another column for no wings. Here's our minor premise. Felix is a cat. Okay, where do we put Felix? Felix is a cat, but there's a big empty slot here because no cats have wings. So we can't put Felix in the first column. Felix must therefore be in this cell, the cell that has no wings. If Felix is a cat, Felix has no wings. Let's try another minor premise that will yield a valid conclusion. Tweety has wings. Okay, we know that Tweety is in the wings column. And because this cell is empty, no cats have wings, Tweety must be a non-cat. Now let's take a look at some minor premises that do not yield valid conclusions. Ariel is not a cat. Okay, well Ariel must therefore be in the bottom row of non-cats. But we don't know where to put Ariel in this row. Is Ariel an angel who has wings? Or is Ariel a mermaid who has no wings? All we know about Ariel is that she is not a cat. Let's try another minor premise that will not yield a valid conclusion. Milhouse is wingless. Okay, we know we've got to put Milhouse in the right column. Milhouse does not have wings. But we don't have enough information to know where to put Milhouse. Is he a uh, blue-haired boy? In which case he would be a non-cat. Or is Milhouse a uh, blue-haired cat wearing glasses? Well, in which case we would put him here. We don't have enough information about Milhouse. So that's how we use the 2 by 2 contingency tables to help us figure out deductive syllogisms. If you have any comments about these videos, feel free to contact me.